Welcome to Nitro World Games 2018, coming to you live from Utah, the state of sport. Right now, we are at the Utah Motorsports Campus, about to drop three of the most anticipated events from Nitro World Games on you. We're going to start things off with FMX Best Trick that's going on behind us, and then we're going to move into Nitro Rallycross, and then FMX Quarter Pipe. Two of those are new events, and man, oh man, I am excited to see this. How's it going, everybody? I am Todd Riches, joined by Laurent Nichols who will be our social media correspondent here today, and it's gearing up to be a pretty insane day, huh? Oh my goodness, you guys, we are in Utah for the third year in a row, and we couldn't ask for a better facility. Utah Motorsports Campus, this place is electric. And we have two of our analysts that are gonna be calling all of the action. I am so excited to introduce Jimmy Coleman and Micah Kranz, guys. What Thanks. are you expecting to see? Thanks, Lorette. I'm excited to be back out here in Utah for the third year in a row here for Nitro World Games. I get I, I get goosebumps before this goes on. Best trick as always. I'm excited, but it's also terrifying at the same time, Micah. Yeah, I love how this contest progresses. They take chances. They're not doing status quo. So everything is new. Everything is a gamble. Everything's a roll of the dice. And I love seeing that. I love seeing the consequences that happen from that. And it's going to be an entertaining day of progression nonetheless. The riders are making their final adjustments there in the CBD MD. Ten, and it looks like they are getting ready to go. We thought we were going to have a win hold and have to flip flop the schedule, but that is not the case. They are ready to get this thing rocking out here. And kicking off the afternoon today is going to be Adam Jones, who is on the right side of your screen right there. Before we get to his uh, two jumps, let's learn a little bit more about him and what makes him tick. I'm Adam Jones. I ride freestyle motocross. I actually really like where I'm at right now. I feel like my riding's better than ever, and I don't push through bad days in the same way that I used to. When I was young, my approach was definitely different, you know, and um, I was willing to throw it out there a little more. I've been doing this for so long, I feel like I am smarter. I don't take unnecessary risks. I'm more calculated in what I do to be a good freestyle rider. You definitely got to put in the work. I want to ride my absolute best run. I want to murder it, and I just want to let the chips fall where they may. Here comes Adam Jones cutting it loose for his first of two attempts. Okay, so watch for the pump off the lip. He's going to go upside down, hook his feet. Yup, and got it. That is awesome. So Nicely done there. Textbook maneuver right there for Adam Jones. By the way, that cliffhanger flip gets an 8.7 on the degree of difficulty. So again, our five judges, they are grading on how well you perform the trick. They are grading on execution as we take another look. Yeah, see, hooking the feet and then hands straight up. I mean, it's like doing yoga at like 70 feet while on a motorcycle with consequences everywhere. You can see, I mean, he's getting blown around. You can see him kind of get off axis just a little bit there. But oh, here's the perfect postcard shot. We're going to call this all day. That. Perfectly uh, extended. His back is perfectly straight. Hands are out. Well, I'm down towards the ground at that point because you're upside down. But he is completely stretched out. He's not bent at all. His body was perfectly linear right there. So that should be a great execution score as far as extension. So Adam is calling it. Says, I don't need a second round. He had two other sure. in the bag. So he's going to end up with an 82.12. Again, the best possible run score you can get out here is 100 points. And he says, I'm good. I am happy with that one, ladies and gents, as we take a look at our next rider right here. This is Blake Williams out of Australia. Uh, Bilko hasn't had a lot of time riding something this big, but uh, he's in the saddle right now getting ready to go. But before we see his runs, let's learn a little bit more about Blake Williams. Blake Williams, a.k.a. Bilko, freestyle motocross rider professionally for the last 13 years. Retired from competition, but you know what? I'm coming out for one last hoorah. Nitro World Games, best trick, coming in hot. Pretty much, uh, you know, I never really hit it at all. Went to Sheenie's house for one day, hit it, and it just kind of clicked to me. You know, I always liked the super kicker back in the day, the shorter 45 gap, and it's very scary, very high, very intimidating, just the gap and how high you actually go. But 
in my mind, I break it down and it's just like an, an oversized version of the old Super Kicker. You know, my mentality is I'm not too worried about what everyone else is doing. It's just better to just go in, keep a straight mindset, focus on what you're there to do, and let the rest sort itself out. I like how casual he was about it. It's just a bigger version of the Super Kicker. And you see a mean mugging at the end of that thing? That's the straightest I've ever seen him. That's the most scared I've ever seen Blake Williams in an interview in his life. He is a six-time X Games medalist, FMX Rider of the Year in 2009, was the first to land a cliffhanger and ruler flip to dirt. What is Bill Kill going to bring to the party out here this afternoon? Yeah, this is a crazy trick. Lazy Boy backflip. You completely lose sight of the landing for about three quarters of this trick. Let's watch him execute. Oh boy! Oh, see, it's where they land on that. The super kicker, the, the landing is what's impressive. You land too high, you get sent on a ride of your life. It's the bounce like, house. If you hit that thing in the wrong spot, yep. you see how they kind of bounce. It can lurch you forward and throw you over the bars. Bilko rides out of that with authority, though, nice and clean. And again, great extension there, similar to what we saw to Adam Jones. Yep, and, and I have watched more collarbones go to this landing than any other landing out there. Take a look at it here in slow-mo. Look at where he gets into the Lazy Boy part of that early in the rotation on the backflip, Mike. Watch him shift. He starts going sideways just a little bit. That back tire is carrying away. That's that wind we were talking There's about earlier. There's nothing they can do. Once you're off that lip, you're in for the rot. You can't slow down. You can't go faster. You can put your arms out and hope it does something, but... That angle shows it really good right there. You can see yeah. how the back end is starting to swab out to the left there. Rider's left as he's coming in. Yeah. And you see, like, watch that back tire. Both tires actually bounced off the landing. That back tire got a little wonky coming down. So he's yeah. going to give it a go again. Gets a 79.80 for the first go round. You get two attempts. Adam Jones waved off his second attempt. So Bilko is going to go for jump number two. And word is that we are going to get the 360 if, here. If he 360s this ramp, it is the most manly thing I've seen in a long time. When you're 60 feet above that landing, it gets extremely small. And you can drift. There's no 360 motorcycles. Blake's done it about the best out of anybody. I'm going to go for bananas if he does this. You're making your 225 pound machine with 360 oh, into the wind. Get it, get it, get it. Oh, and my goodness. He's on to that one. So Bilko has a lazy boy flip and a 360 in the mix here. Our second rider in out of seven here. Dude. There's so much there. The ramp is only maybe two, two and a half feet wide. So you have to spin off the lip with a motorcycle. That's a 300 pound machine. And if you get off access once you're off the lip, you're done. As you can see, he kind of slowed it down by pushing his arms out. But that was a really amazing trick. And that's a lot of progression for that man. I am stoked for him. So here at two riders in, Adam Jones sits at that top spot right now with an 82.12. Bilko just under 80 with his first attempt as we take another look at it and await the score here. Just insane how he throws himself over the shoulder, spots the landing. And you can see he's fighting it the whole way. That is not a normal trick for a motorcycle to go off axis. They, they stay very linear. But as you can see, that's definitely a three. Take a look at it. Flat spins that one out. And again, I have to keep telling this story. It is really, really windy out here. Yeah. And he just slung that thing out into the wind and made that thing go around a full 360 degree rotation. And I know what people are thinking. Why wouldn't you do this event indoor? There is not an arena big enough for either of these two ramps to do this indoor. Yeah, with that kind of a 14 foot <laughs> lip and the way it pitches yeah. up the sky, you run the risk of hitting jumbotrons. Yeah. So he's going to get a 58.5 for that second run score. So it was a lower degree of difficulty, or actually it was a slightly higher degree of difficulty, but the execution points weren't there. So Adam Jones will stay in that number one spot as of right now, as Bilko's going to stick with that first First jump, keep him in the number two position. Taking a look at Pat Bowden right there. He's made the podium in best trick the last two years in a row out here at the Nitro World Games. Will this be the year that he could come out on top? He's Pat Bowden launches off Dude. the big one. Double grab here. Yes. Yes. Booted it to the moon. Hey, my name's Pat Bowden. I'm from the Gold Coast, Australia, and I ride freestyle motocross. My dad told me that uh, when I was three years old, I asked him for my first dirt bike, and he said when my feet could touch the foot pegs, he'd buy it for me. So as a three-year-old kid, like, I don't even know how I knew what a dirt bike was. I don't know, like, I just feel like it's, it's what I was born to do. Now 
nowadays with the way the sport is, fear is the biggest obstacle we have to overcome. It's quite a lot of strain on me to, you know, go to all these competitions and, and risk my life and I just have to remind myself, like, do I really want to sit in an office and work a 9 to 5? And I know what the answer is to that, so I'm living my life and I'm, I'm living my dream. I'm travelling the world and getting to see all these places and doing what I love, so, yeah, it's tough, but what do you do? We're living our dream. That gave me, that, that hurt my back just watching him right there. Like I said, he's made the podium the last two years and best trick here in Utah at the Nitro World Games. 2016, the inaugural year, he was knocking on the door of a win. He got second place. He had to settle for third last year. And you saw some of the snippets of what Pat Bowden is capable of. He's chasing Adam Jones right now, who sits in the top spot with an 82. Point one two. If you're just joining us, we have seven riders in the mix. This is rider number three in the lineup. Taking a look at what got Adam Jones in that top spot there, Micah. Yeah, and that is one of his go-to tricks in life, which is kind of <laughs> crazy to think when you're upside down 60 feet, like, I should take my hands off and stand on the handlebars. Not your normal consciousness, but Jones is a little different than the rest. If there is a, a, any sort of Hall of Fame, this man would be one of the first inductees. Like, him and Mad Mike need to be just immortalized immediately. So two runs per rider, and it's the better of your two runs that count. The best possible run score you can get out here is 100 points as we get set to unleash Australia's Pat Bowden. Pat does it his way. This man puts more time on these big ramps when he has the opportunity. I'm psyched to see this. Oh, all right. So extension was really, really big there. He held on to that for a long time. He had the height, which allowed him to hang that one out and just stall out there around into the rotation. Yeah, and, that, and it was perfectly executed. Again, like you said, the judges are nitpicking. That is absolutely the name of the game. With this DOD format, you have to, because you kind of take like a quarter of the judges' jobs away, but then on top of it, you've actually had to give them more work, because you have to analyze things they wouldn't look at otherwise. You're focusing on the minutia at this point, and they don't want to see any slip-ups whatsoever. And that I mean, that's picture perfect from that angle. Now, you have an amazing skateboard background for years and years. Tell me the difference of that trick than the other one. Then what we saw out of Adam Jones. Out of Adam, yep. Adam, he was a, he, going back to what I said earlier, he holds onto it a little longer. Watch, the arms are out a little more up. That's the difference between a cliffhanger and a Christ here. But he's perfectly extended. But I say the key right here is going to be how long did he hold himself in that position. Yep. Adam got his back completely straight, got into it perfectly, but he was only there for like a tenth of a second. It got back to the bike. Pat held onto it a little bit longer. So I'm going to walk the plank and see if this one's going to be higher. And it is an wow. 88.63, but Pat is not happy with that. So he's going to go back and take a second run. Now, is he going to do the same trick or a different one? What is our format? If it were me, if I was a gambling man, I'd do a different one. He has submitted two to the judges. Yeah. If you only submit one and you do a different one, you get a zero. You're allowed to do the same trick twice. If yep. you don't feel that you got it, you nailed it the first go around, you can do it again. However, if you only submitted one trick to the judges and you decide to go rogue, whether you make it, it's the best thing of the night, you're getting a zero because you have to submit it in advance. Look at the boss man's watchful eye. <laughs> Pastrana wants to be around it more than anybody. All right, I heard they tell me same trick. I'm interested to see as he approaches the big ramp. So, very similar to the first one. Yeah. The only thing, we'll have to see the camera angle here. I'm wondering, the back end kind of came around a little bit, going back to the tale we've been telling about the wind out here. We'll have to see what we get on the replay angles right here. But electing to go with the same trick twice. Yeah. It's got him in the lead as of right now. Look how elegant that gets. That's <laughs> just incredible. <laughs> like a perfect the, diver in the Olympics. Look yeah. at him just, and perfect. I think he got a little <laughs> bit higher this go around. And look, the back end. The, the bike didn't swab out to the left right there, and dare I say he held that just a skosh longer this time around. He's yeah. already got an 88.63. However, we still have four other guys left to go in this best trick competition oh, out here. Wow. So he does. He bumps it up a little bit higher right there, knocking on the door of the 90s. Remember, he got second place in 2016. He got third last year, and he's the top guy right now here with 
four more riders to go. Pat Bowden with an 89.72. So three down, four to go. This next gentleman, he comes all the way from uh, Alicante, Spain. He asked Travis in Nitro World Games practice two years ago how to do a double backflip. Travis gave him some tips and he went for it. Now he can throw those things with the greatest of ease. His name's Christian Meyer. Let's learn a little bit more about him right now. Well, I competed in Nitro World Games in 2016 and I couldn't qualify for the event, but better because now I can more strong. Well, the ramp is so big. Yeah, it's incredible, you know. I love the, the sport uh, going big because it's progressing, you know. It's not staying in, in backflips combo or body barriers. It's going more big, so I'm happy about that too. You see me learning tricks in practice because uh, in Spain I don't practice a lot. I don't have another option. I just came here, I need to, to do the tricks, so I just practice here. What I will feel if I win, I can't explain you that, man, sorry. Because I never win this kind of competition and if I win this, I don't know what's gonna happen tomorrow. I'm Christian May, I'm so excited to be here in Nature World Games this year. Thank you, Travis Pastrana, for making this happen. Yeah, we just dropped that on you, like, what would it be like to win? I can't explain that to you because I've never won a competition of this size before. Grew up uh, racing moto with super class and super cross in the junior class in the Spanish Racing Championship Series with his older brother, Franz. Started focusing heavily on freestyle many years ago. They actually have an FMX compound in Argentina to him and his brother, older brother, who ride out a lot, so... Uh, Can we talk about his number plate? I was just going to say, he like he cut that thing out with a CNC machine. That dude got a can of Krylon and did accents on his motorcycle. This is amazing. Forget the plastic number plate. I'm just going to home make this thing and rattle can it. But here we go with his first of two attempts. It's going to be memorable. Oh, my goodness. And see, he got the bounce house right there, but he hangs on. That, you're rolling the dice right there. That thing can easily just pitch you off the bike, throw you over the bars. He calls that the backflip triple indie tsunami, by that, the way. There was a lot of spastic movements going on while that man was upside down. It's just, he does it his own way, man. He just goes out there and likes to send it. So there's indie, there's, well, there's three, so triple indie. There's three kicks of the scissor indie. What, one, there's two, three. He's trying to kick away the mosquitoes right there. Looks he's like going he's through swimming. The air. <laughs> this is awesome. Now, he's one of those guys that we were talking about earlier. This is the only trick that he submitted to the judges. So if he does elect to take his second run, he will have to do this again. If he does something else, it will score a zero. I love it. Send it, absolutely. Look at how high that, that vantage point right there gives you a great idea of the heights these guys are achieving because you can see the building in the background there. We say earlier, they're reaching heights of 60 feet right there, coming off this thing with a 14-foot tall limb, the Moon Booter. I've never seen a triple indie in my life. I've been in this sport for a long time. I like it. I'm into it. 80.38 <laughs> for the first go around. That's going to wedge him in there between Adam Jones and Blake Williams. So uh, the man from Spain, España, is going to give it another go right here. It says triple indie, look through KOD flip. He calls it the backflip tsunami triple indie. Will the second one be the better of the two? Kick, 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 and flip. Perfect. So, so awesome. Did you see at the end of that one, after he did the triple indie, he kind of got himself straightened out and got the body sort of lined up and then got back on the bike. Unreal. He just did the Elvis kick right everything there. You see that? Of, everything from this man's outfit to his motorcycle to his trick choice. To his number plate. Needs to be studied. Absolutely studied. I if he was fired up or mad at the end there with the old <laughs> goggle smash on the ground there. Hard to tell. He's a very passionate man. I've met him before at a couple of Red Bull X Fighters events. And he's, a, he's a character. Unreal. He loves to ride. Look at, the, look at his legs. I think the extension was a little bit better oh, walking yeah. that plank That was way better. Two. That was way better than the first one. Look, look at Travis. What do you think, Travis? Do you think Travis is saying, hey, good job? But do you think he's in there instigating right now, telling these guys, like, hey, next time, what if you did this? I want to interview Bilko just on a triple indie conversation alone. Can you imagine? <laughs> that is awesome. All right, so Pat Bowden sits in the lead with an 89.72. Christian Mayer with an 80.38, the first attempt. What will the second attempt score 
Actually gave him a lower score, 78. So right. which shows you my I, analysis I, it, is garbage. I thought it was a little bit more, but that's why we're over here making pretty words, and they're over there breaking down the minutiae of what these guys do in the air. So he is going to have to stick with that first run attempt, which got him, which has him in a podium position as of right now. So four riders down with three left to go. Your one, two, three as of right now. It's Pat Bound in the lead, followed by Adam Jones, who got the party started out here. And Christian Mayer, who we just saw from Spain, sits in that number three position with an 80 points, three eights. However, it is far from over. We're basically at the halfway point. So uh, we still have some work to take care of out here in Freestyle Motocross Best Trick. As we take a look at our current leader, that's Pat Bowden sitting in the top spot with an 89.72. We'll have our remaining three riders when we come back, but let's send him back over to Todd Richards over there at the host set. Thanks, boys. Well, anytime that you get to watch motorcycles fly upside down multiple times, with people barely connected to them, it is fantastic, and I am a fan. It's just almost dying is great. <laughs> they got it under control, Todd. Don't worry about it. Well, we asked you guys, where are you watching from? And you have done us a solid checking in. We have Joshua Kinney, Maryland, home of Travis. We have Mark from Ireland, Matthew from Scotland, Raul from Costa Rica. Eric is saying good day from Melbourne, Australia. So excited. This just proves how much Nitro World Games, the reach that we have. We are going worldwide. We have international athletes and international fans. So really, really amazing things. If you guys want to see this in person, right? You're going to check out the tour. The You Got This Tour is traveling around North America and Europe. If you go to NitroCircus.com, you can check out and find your tickets there. Well, we got much more coming here today. Later on, after FMX, we're going to switch over to the Velocity Channel and have Nitro Rallycross, the premiere of Travis Pastrana's insane interpretation of what a rally course should be. And according to many of the drivers, it's the best that has ever been produced. So check in with your local times and listings for the Velocity Channel because it's going to be coming at you hot and heavy. All right, boys, let's get a little bit more uh, freestyle motocross action underway. I can't wait to see what these guys are going to throw down next. Yeah, I've, I've still got goosebumps over here. We've seen some pretty impressive stuff so far. We still have three riders left to go again. Recapping, it's Pat Bowden sitting in that top spot with an 89.72. So for those of you just joining us on Facebook Live, seven riders in the lineup out here. They get two runs apiece. It's the better of your two runs that count if you're hoping to stand on the Nitro World Games podium here in 2018 from the Utah Motorsports Campus. But let's take a look back and see how we got to where we stand right now. Yeah, we have sent some humans over the chasm, and they have responded absolutely appropriately. As you can see, you're, Meyer just going bananas on this ramp, kicking and screaming his way into a third place currently. There's uh, Mr. Consistent, Mr. Jones. There's Bowden, as you can see. This man is uh, Nitro World Games absolute legend, and uh, he's got some stories from Australia to back up that legendary status. But always, man, this is his contest to win. He always flirts in the top three, and that's a fantastic place to be when you are at the World Games. Again, judging format unlike anyone else out there, ramps unlike anyone else out there. This is the place to see or be seen. Well, we mentioned earlier that he's made the podium the last two years. He's looking at a possible trifecta right now. He's at a second and a third place finish. He's never taken a win. He's in that top spot as of right now. We'll see if he can hold on to it as we go through our final three riders. But coming up right now, we have one of the most hardworking and rambunctious riders out of the Gold Coast of Australia. This guy's all about progression and pushing, and pushing himself. Here's a look at the one and only Harry Bink. Hi, my name is Harry Bing. I'm 24 years old. I'm from Canberra, Australia, and I live on the Gold Coast. As a young kid, I grew up watching all the Nitro Circus DVDs, and I absolutely idolized Travis Estrana. He was my hero, and I never thought I would ever get to meet him. I had always had a dream of being a professional freestyle motocross rider, yet I had never jumped a freestyle ramp or done any tricks before on a motocross bike. So I decided after working long, hard days as a carpenter, I was going to build a freestyle ramp and pursue my career. One thing led to another and here we are. I think Nitro Circus are just taking the whole chapter of freestyle motocross to another level with these ramps and opening new doors in the game of the sport and just owning freestyle motocross and taking it to a whole nother level and we all owe a big thank you to Travis Estrada for that.
Well, you're looking at last year's champ there with that front flip rock solid. That last little slow-mo bit that you saw right there, that gives you a great little look into what that mechanical assist ramp looks like that we were talking about. As you saw as he left the lift, that top part just hinges, and it allows him to lurch forward to go into these front flip combos, and it netted him a win last year, Micah. I can't believe he's wearing a shirt. I was just thinking I the same thing. He's, he's fully clothed out here. What is going on? Here we go. This man eats World's First for breakfast. Let's take him to the front flip land. Oh, no, oh, no. Oh, has he got enough rotation? No, no. See, Whoa. that was scary, but he gets up from the scary Harry right there. He gets up from Dude. that one unscathed. That is the beauty of this ramp. You have that resi, and with the progression of what Nitro Games has done over the years, it allows these guys to do these groundbreaking tricks and get up and walk away from it. Look how he's fighting this. So it's going to go forward. He's trying to do a lazy boy. And of course, in true Harry fashion, he is going to force it around whether he gets the pop or not. That motorcycle did not get enough reaction from it hitting the front and sending it. But there's no way Harry's not going to put those hands as far out as he can and just, I mean, that's a 300 pound motorcycle. There's no inertia left where you can make it go faster in the air. If you don't get it off the pop, you are done. This is, physics should be studied on this trick. Look at him go anyway for it. Tux tries to snap it around. What an absolute beast to think he can get that done. I'm just amazed that he tried the Lazy Boy in the middle of that. Once he knew he didn't have the pop, I thought he would have just tried to front flip around and just ride it out and come back for attempt number two. But you see how he gets around and gets to the point where he can eject from the bike and just bounce his backside off that resi and then ride away. But here we go with attempt number two. Can he make it happen this Get go around, Harry. Micah? Get him, Harry. Pop, flip, up. A little further. Oh! oh. oh. Unreal. This is his event. He is so frustrated. He works day in and day out. He had just learned that trick yesterday. He loves World First. He is so disappointed in himself, but uh, like you know he's going to get it done. You absolutely know that is within his scope. Uh, Unreal, he's so disappointed. He has so many other tricks. He was so pumped on learning it yesterday. He wanted to throw it out there. Look at Travis. Harry, it's okay. It's, you, you're last year's winner. You got nothing but good things coming this year. He's gonna, I, Rebel running is key in this, in this event. <laughs> Yeah, but think about it. I mean, the mindset that you have coming into something like this, you're focused on this thing, this one trick, and you've done it, oh, you've replayed it over and over again into the foam pit, into your mind, and then it doesn't work out for you two times around. It's extremely frustrating for these guys. What a crazy camera angle of that trick. He had his arms so spread out. He's so mad at himself, Harry. He, sh he doesn't realize how happy he should be that he still has all of his teeth in his mouth. I, I was going to say, he <laughs> got out of I mean? that like, unscathed. You're going, you're taking... A heavy machine for, off a 14-foot lip into the air, into a front flip, and both times he bounced off of that and walked away from that resi. Someone needs to sit him down and explain it, like, hey, it's okay, you walked away. There'll be another day. Oh, Harry. We know he can do it. Like I said, he was last year's winner with that front flip rock solid. Getting a little consolation and a pat on the back from our starter, Dave Butts, right Maybe there. Maybe it was the jersey. Maybe it was the jersey. You never know. <laughs> Holding him back. There's no stopping him. Of course he won a third time. You can't tell him not to go again, right? He wants to get it done, pulling it around. Look at what, did you see that right hand, man? He wow. was just kind of fumbling for the for the grip with that right hand. Man, it's all in the pot. Just to let that thing just flip under you. Oh, this was the third go, yeah. the, the rebel run. Hey, that's one of those things where he knows it's not he knows it's not gonna count, but you just have to shake that off your back. You have you know what? You got I'm gonna do it one more time. I don't care if it counts. This is for the fans, this is for my own mindset, yeah. my own confidence for the next time I have to do this down the line, whether it's a contest or if he decides to do it in a show. I can't tell you what it's like to not pull a trick. It eats at you. And then you start getting scared the spot's gonna go away. Like wow. that would sit would not sit with him well. I'm glad he got up. Especially if you're sitting around obsessing about it for weeks yeah. in. Well, this next gentleman, he got started riding bikes when his grandfather father bought him his first bike all the way back in 1995, and a year and a half later, he was entering races and then switching to freestyle. He's all the way from Belgium. Let's learn a little bit more right now about William Van Den Pute. My name is William Van Den Pute. I'm from Belgium. I'm freestyle motocross rider, and I'm competing at the Nitro World Games in Best Trick. Last year, Nitro World Games, I wasn't expecting it was going to be like this, but I was really surprised that everything worked out well. I got a good result, so I was super happy about it. Yeah, all the other guys are using the backflip ramp, so they're doing like double backflips. Definitely that's going to be something difficult to compete up to. I'm still curious what's going to happen. <laughs> A 
and he lit up Rice Eccles Stadium last year, and we are about to unleash him for two attempts. It's Pat Bowden sitting in the lead here with an 89.72, followed by Adam Jones in second, and Christian Mayer in third with an 80.38. That is your podium as of now. We are down to our final two riders, and uh, he uh, there's your current leader right there on your left. That is Mr. Bowden sitting in that top spot, looking at, well, actually, he will podium this year. Yes. Third time in a row now that Harry Bink wasn't able to jump up in there. So at the worst, Pat would finish third. So three for three for him. Poor what Pat. Is, what, is, position. what is William front flip, bring to the party? Front flip, seat grab, Indies. He's going to flip, grab the seat, kick his legs, and then hopefully bring it around. And he has a touch of the oh. under rotation, similar to what we saw out of Harry. Yeah. Don't worry, you get two runs. You get another attempt would, out of there. I would celebrate being able to stand, too. You don't understand, like, this This concussion is the same on this ramp. Don't let the air part of it at all knock off any of the consequences involved here. This is gnarly, gnarly stuff they're trying. That lands on top of you, even on the airbag, you're done. You are going to the hospital with internal injuries. This is banana stuff to be trying. And there's so many forces working against it. The motorcycle's trying to flip while you're trying to grab it and maneuver yourself in an athletic way. That is yeah. crazy. There are so many things fighting against each other. I don't know how they think front flip variations are real, but this is awesome. This is why we progress. You're kicking those legs out. Your hips are in a weird position. You're fumbling for that grab after you take off that. Let's not forget about the wind that we keep talking about. That yeah. is the big story out here. And you saw how the bike got all sorts of twisted up as he was trying to come around and under rotated. And again, go back to what I said earlier, what Nitro World Games has done over the years and with that ramp and that resi, it allows these guys to bounce, get up, and do this again, which is maniacal to me. All these dudes skip practice. This is, the, can you go out there and do it again? Do you mind? Hey, we got TV time. We got things we got to do. Can you charge this again? That is so much pressure to put on risking your life. There's so many elements, and then the wind itself, we got to make these times, we got to make this happen. This is, everyone should get a medal for that alone. Well, here's a strategy question as we take a look at our current leader right there, Pat Bowden with an 89.72. Uh, of these tricks that you submit in advance to the judges, so they're all trying to beat this right here as we take a quick look back and see what Pat did to put him in the top spot. Christ-alike, I see it. I see it in this Are, are, are yeah, you picking it up? It? Yes, all I right. get it. Okay. That one spoke to so me. The point I was going to make was that you have to submit these tricks in advance to the judges, and they assign it a degree of difficulty score. William has the highest degree of difficulty score out of anything he submitted. He has a 9.7 for a sideshow front flip, yet he went for the front flip in the seat grab, which only has a 9.1 degree of difficulty. So does he do the same thing, or does he go for the higher DOD trick? Same thing. Kick. Bring it around. No, less rotation. Oh. Unreal. And, and again, yeah. you're going off a 14-foot lift, people. You're throwing yourself essentially two and a half stories into the air and landing on that bag, doing this on something that weighs anywhere from 225 to 300 pounds, and you get up and walk away twice. And it's the only ramps out there. You can't go practice this on any given weekend. So every time we have to push the ramps forward, push them back. And a lot of these guys, like I said, are just saying, hey, for the sake of ease, I'm going to try this death-defying stunt. And Man, that is crazy. I wonder if there's something going on with that ramp with the front. Well, I guess Harry came out and pulled the other one, but those guys just aren't getting the pop I think they're used to getting. It could be lack of throttle. It could be, I mean, we're up in elevation, the wind. I mean, there's so much. Look at his body. He's gotten a car accident. We just watched it at 1,000 frames per second. Uh, unreal. It just slides out of that. It. It's up like it's no biggie. However, there was less rotation, right, or less moving around on the back end of the bike that go around. So we are down to our final rider, the last guy that can shake up the standings. Will this be the year that Pat Bowden walks out of here with the win? Well, this gentleman right here from Australia is gonna have to say something about it right here. His name is Josh Sheehan. Let's take a look right now at some of his past performances at Nitro World Games. G'day, I'm Josh Sheehan, 32, from West Australia. I grew up on an orchard, had a bit of room on the farm, and just always rode motorbikes when I was younger and loved just doing jumps, tricks, going fast, and it kind of just led into a freestyle competition which lit the fire and yeah, next minute I'm here. We're capable of doing much bigger double flip combinations at World Games so I'll definitely have to pull out something big. Like a super double flip or you know, ruler double flip if I, if I can get that. I think two of my biggest rivals are Tom Jez and Levi Sherwood. They're, they're both doing double flip combos and you know, both have a huge range of tricks. I got away with um, being one of the few guys doing a double backflip for a while. The tricks have progressed so far. We've got a lot more people doing double flips. I didn't have to do anything before, but now I have to step up. It's great. It's, it's pushing the sport. It's pushing us. It's 
we keep feeling like we're getting to the end, but new stuff just keeps coming out, or we get bigger ramps so we can just get more done on the ramps. So not only does he have that double backflip in his arsenal, he's got a couple of pretty gnarly variations in the mix as well. There's your current leader. That's Pat Bowden getting uh, some one-on-one -on -one time there with Travis Pastrana. Pat sits in that top spot. The only thing between him and a win right now is Josh Sheehan. But Adam Jones, we know we're going to see him on yeah. the best trick World Games podium, on actual World Games podium out here this year with an 82.12. And Christian Meyer sitting on the bubble right now with an 80.38. He's looking at a podium spot as of right now, but I'd be pretty nervous if I was him looking at that leaderboard because this guy has got a gnarly one that he's about to bestow upon the fans here at Utah Motorsports Campus. We call him the unicorn on tour. This man is magic. Here we go. Big trips. He's going to go upside down twice. Only rider to do that today. And he's going to throw a KOD in it. One flip. KOD. Oh second my flip. Goodness. Yeah. Rotates it and gets whiplashed backwards, but bounces right up. Look what happened to that man. He shredded that jersey. Everything is consequences. Again, this motorcycle has tons of moving parts. He's still trying to figure out where he is right now. He got the Harry Bank special on the Hulk Hogan t-shirt rip. Do you see that? He's like, wait a minute, wardrobe malfunction. Little help here, guys. What just happened? There was plastic and all sorts of wardrobe carnage coming down that landing for Sheeny. One flip, KOD. Got the waggle. Look at where the blue bike. Flip. Oh my goodness. He just gave it a little too much and just over rotated that one. But look at that. I mean, everyone else under rotating. Why wouldn't you give it just a little bit more? And he got dealt with. Oh my goodness. He got scorpioned hard coming off of the back of that. And his feet were up. And then the back of the helmet just kind of dragged and it flipped him over. But he bounced right back up. He almost got ripped into that back wheel. The nightmare scenario of anybody with anything motorized. I mean,. Look at him drift I, yeah, you didn't, right off the lip. He barely stayed on the bag. I didn't notice that drift at first or real time speed, but that camera angle right there. He's going from rider's left to rider's right and gets the last bit of that resi landing. That is one of the gnarliest things I have ever seen in competition. He oh, almost it, look at where his right foot is. It's not even on the peg to the last second. And just over rotate. Think about the think about the schematics of that. You over rotated a double backflip. So you pulled off so hard that you had to go two and a half flips and then you're in like a Batman villain consequence we're getting sucked into the back wheel like this whole like that fan just went on a ride of his lifetime if that's the last Batman time he ever jumped villain consequence. did you see him getting pulled into that thing I, we need to hashtag that <laughs> later on going into the quarter pipe high air contest oh what? my is he gonna go again I don't know who wants a, he, he wants a shredded jersey yeah. <laughs> I don't know. He's got the goggles off. I don't know if he's going to go again here. I don't, I don't know if I would. That I, kid right there is going to get a souvenir buy a, for a the lot man. Lottery ticket from the great state of Utah. And just they have the lottery here? I don't know, but I would if I was here. But I have to wait until the layover for that one. So I, I don't, is he going to go? He's over there talking to Dave Butts. I don't know. You can see our, our oh, leader right there. Brought him another jersey. I <laughs> guess he's going to go. That is incredible. Look at Bowden. He's been in that position every year where he's leading in the last couple riders. He's pulled some amazing trick, and then he just watches people come at him. I tell you what, though, at the very least, consistency has been key for him because this will be the third year of Nitro World Games where he's walked out of here on the best trick podium. So that's nothing to thumb your nose at right there. I know he wants I know he wants the highest spot on the podium for sure. He's had a second. He's had a third. But uh, I'd be nervous, too. So it's, let's not forget about Christian Meyer, who's down there on that bubble. Yeah. He's in a podium spot as of right now. And Adam Jones is just sitting over there going, oh, I wasn't coming to this till early dancing. in the week, and I'm, and I'm on the podium. That is, he's the most laid back individual. Like you said, he was an alternate, right? And got the nod. Well, I don't know if he's I an alternate it. or he just didn't decide he was going to do it till the last <laughs> second. I'll have to text him about that later, but yeah. that'll, that'll put a smile on your face for the eight hour drive down yeah, I-80 I I back to Reno. Shout out to all the good humans on tour. Look at that man, Bowden. Again, this is, he should just be called the bar setter. All that man does is say, here's what I'm doing. It's always next level. Can you catch up? And then he makes everyone else come to that level. All right, we're going to give Sheeny a minute to compose himself and put on a fresh jersey right there. But in the meantime, let's send it back over to the host set with Todd Lorette. Jeez, I mean, the Holy motorcycle cow. wants to kill you after it falls on top of you. This is great. He just got sucked <laughs> into that back wheel. That was one of the most scary things I think that I have ever seen. And luckily, Joshian, very fit. I don't know how many riders could have taken that impact, but you know what? He's doing a great job. Um, a little bit earlier, we asked where you guys were tuning in from. Reese from UK, he's saying hello. Timothy from Tallahassee, Keith from Casper, Wyoming, and North Carolina. We also wanted to know where, what stop you guys are going to come and see us. 
And we had Linda from Toronto, September 30th, and Matt going to uh, Birmingham, UK, and Sheeny is up again, you guys. All right, remember, we're just getting started here today at Nitro World Games. We're going to have Nitro Rallycross coming up next on Velocity Channel, and then we're going to have that behemoth, the quarter pipe back there, to end off this amazing day here in Utah. Boys, is he going again or what? He's locked and loaded. He's in the gate. Joe Duncan's over there talking to him, so he is going to go. So I'm asking you, do you come back and do the KOD double flip again? Yes, absolutely. He was so Show that thing he's boss? 100%. Again, it's action sports mentality. You're going to get fucked up at horse. You better get back on it. It's a long day. Here we go. Josh Sheehan going in for attempt number two. Can he make it happen the second go around? Flip KOD flip. And Boom. there you go. Well, he dabbed a foot. However, he puts it down. You can do that. That'll be, I believe, dabbing one foot, if I'm not mistaken. Let me go through the rules here right quick. I believe that's a half point deduction. Yep. It is. One hand or one foot down is a half point deduction. However, that was a monster of a trick. That's two times around, and you're doing the KOD, which stands for kiss of death. You're vertical, and you're leaning forward. You're putting your face into the front fender right there. How about that for redemption, Mike? Just personal achievement alone. You don't need to give this man a medal. He already is going to have the greatest night of his life. Look at this replay. Absolutely cranking off the lip, right? Sky ground. Kick your legs off. Sky ground again as it comes back. Put them both down. I mean, you, you drag a foot, but Watch come on, man. Watch how sideways he gets. Look at where his legs are in that man. first rotation. Are you kidding me? He's almost doing a three in that thing. Three front flip, double flip. Oh, it's all sorts of he's, badness. He's got 360s in his arsenal as well. Look at that. Execution! He kind of tsunami that one over. The heels get way over the back of the helmet there. Look at that back wheel just panic revving. Please come Fighting around. Please that come thing. around. Please come around. Well, Boom. it went too far around the last go around, and it yep. looked like he was thinking, uh oh, is it going to come up too short? Had to dab that foot. Not a problem. However, like I said, it's only a half point deduction. Remember, our judges are solely judging on execution. There is a degree of difficulty score for each one of these tricks that has already been assessed and redemption for that man right there. I'm not sure he spotted that landing as much as it just came out and smacked him out of the air. That was insane. Yeah. All it takes celebrate. put the goggles back on, get a fresh shirt. I'm gonna go out and do it again, guys. Man, yeah, he didn't know, I'm telling you. He was that was just a man flying through the air, letting muscle memory take over. And in 82.77, the first go around, wait for the run number two score. Needs an 89.82 to overtake Pat Bowden. 82.77 is what comes up for Sheeny for run two. So it looks like Pat Bowden's going to get the win out here. So Pat Bowden, Josh Sheehan, and Adam Jones, your one, two, three. Wow, that is crazy. Live event announcer Kenny Bell out there stepping in the mix to get an interview with their winner. What a day. I mean, you got to give Sheeny credit for getting back up, doing that again. Yeah, definitely Kenny making that outfit look amazing. We're going to give him credit for that as well. So to be standing here in first place, like, I'm a little bit confused, but like, well, yeah, Pat, place, me, absolutely place, deserving it. Place, this man works incredibly hard. He's come over to this country three years straight trying to get on that very top spot, more than deserving, to say the least. Well, going back to his story in the history of Nitro World Games, he started off the 2016 inaugural event with a second place best trick finish. He capped it off with a third place finish last year. Now he's run the trifecta, and he will stand on the tallest part of the podium here at the Utah Motorsports Campus in motocross best trick today. He's been most exciting in practice year after year. It's good to see him transfer that into the finals when it when it really counts. And all the pressure was on him. There were people chasing. There's people going, you know, wildly progressive tricks and. Pat, Pat made it happen. Oh, I still, my leg's still bouncing. I'm still nervous. Best trick always winds me up. I feel like I just drank 10 pots of coffee. Taking yeah. another look at what did it for Pat right here. Yeah, that perfect execution. Now remember, he did it the first time around. Didn't like it. He came back and did it again for his second attempt, and that's what netted him that 89.72. Yeah. The perfectionist, and it paid off dividends in 2018. Yeah, that man has been working extra, extra hard, doing tons and tons of work. That whole Australian contingent are, are just progressing the sport, especially this best trick one hit style of jump. These guys just flourish at it. And yeah, coming out here today with no practice and there was a little bit touch and go there early on. I was like, are we going to do this due to the wind? Are we not? Are we going to flip flop it a little bit later on and run with a quarter pipe higher? It was a little bit of uncertainty there. And then they decided, hey, you know what? We're feeling it. Let's do it despite the win. So taking a look at your final standings here from Utah Motorsports Campus. Adam Jones walks out of here on the best trick podium in third place. Josh Sheehan, after a just 
diabolical looking crash in round number one, comes back in round number two to claim second place. But it's Pat Bowden that walks out of here. Top honors in 2018. He gets the win by virtue of his second attempt with an 89.72 here to cap off FMX best trick here at Nitro World Games 2018, Micah. Yeah, the story I think definitely goes to, to Josh and Harry, those two. Uh, went out of comfort zones and, and paid nope. the price.